Matt and Roy back again. Well, I know I said I wasn't going to make a video today because of uh, my cold, and yes, I do have a cold now. Um, it started out uh, yesterday morning as kind of like a, a just a regular sore throat, and I think it drained from my ears because as I've stated before, I tend to get a lot of ear infections, so I think initially it started as that. Unfortunately, I can never feel earaches, so I never know when I have an infection. Um, I started yesterday with those echinacea tablets. Thank you, uh, Aunt Barbara, for telling me about those. Um, I, she actually mentioned those last time I was sick and uh, made sure I had some on hand. I'm starting to feel better now. The sore throat is pretty much gone, but now everything's uh, up in my sinuses now. So I decided to go out today and uh, purchase some uh, cold supplies, if you will. I also stopped at the thrift store. That's what the bag on the right is. So. We'll go ahead and start with that, just to show you the few things I picked up this morning. Nothing too spectacular. I, when I went into the thrift store, I noticed that they were stocking up the uh, miscellaneous or bric-a-brac section. And I came across this. This is a Panasonic branded uh, headset for cordless phones, model KX-TCA60. Now, I actually picked this up for mom because uh, she likes to talk a lot with family on the cordless phones and she has a hard time keeping it up to her ear. It actually hurts her neck to kind of hold the phone. So she likes to use these instead and the one she has is well used and definitely well worn. The little uh, plastic um, piece that sits on your ear is all broken, all the stuff is flaked off and it's not that comfortable anymore. So when I saw this one for $3.98, I asked her if she wanted it and she said definitely. You can see hands-free productivity, a reversible use on either ear. So I guess that means you can flip this whole thing around. Right now it's set to be on your left ear and you can flip it around if you wanted to to be on your right ear. But I think mom uses it this way. She, Whenever I see her it's usually on her left ear. Um, just some general information about it here. Uh, adjustable headset, rotate the bottom microphone uh, for use either with the left or the right ear. Comfortable fit headband, which is this part right on top of here. And with our big Scandinavian heads, believe me, we need a large one like this. Um, we see lightweight. Um, Sans is designed for the 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz uh, analog systems. That's interesting because this is not a wireless headset. It doesn't matter in the slightest what kind of telephone you have. As long as your phone has the 2.5 millimeter jack, which is right there, you can see it right there, then you're good to go. So, uh, yeah, they're just bragging that it's made for a specific headset because I think they actually sold this along side as an accessory with some of the uh, Panasonic cordless phones and let's see what the date is on here if there is one I don't see a date but because they're mentioning 2.4 gigahertz uh, cordless phones I'm guessing this dates back to like around 2001 2002 and the next thing I got is just something uh, something I'm actually happy to find I haven't seen in the thrift stores a lot recently and that is some uh, Sony mini DV tapes. You see I paid 98 cents and this is for three of the 60 minute premium grade tapes. Now I know a few of you guys are going to say, Matt, why are you using the Sony tapes? I know. There's a scuttlebutt out there that the Sony tapes tend to degrade the um, heads of the, the camcorders after a while. But I did some more research on that and, and that's just not true. There, there were a few of the older Sony Mini DV tapes when they were using a chemical that was a little too harsh but those were way back in the early 2000s and you, as you can see this one is from 2004 so fairly confident these will be fine alright so let's go ahead and get to the goodies I'll show you guys what I do to get rid of a cold and not everything here is is for the cold uh, first thing I have here is just some hard candies that mom asked me to pick up at night, um, when her mouth gets dry, she likes to suck on something, so we keep these in the other room. Um, these are from Dollar Tree. They're the uh, Crystal Bay Confections. These are actually very good. This company is um, makes hard candies and different types of all kinds of candies for Dollar Tree. You can see down here it says uh, distributed by Greenbrier International, which is the Dollar Tree. And and it is made in Mexico, which a lot of people may not know this, but 
quite a bit of the hard candies we consume in this country are from Mexico. I didn't originally know that. I looked that up online when I started reading packages and seeing a lot of the stuff was from Mexico. Next, we have something I'm sucking on right now. This is the Assured Cherry Cough Drops. Not too bad. You get 35 for a dollar. Again, this is a Dollar Tree brand specific item. Uh, menthol, and they're supposed to be cherry flavored, but I don't taste much cherry because I think these are actually sugar free. But they get the job done and they keep my throat from getting raw. Next, we have something I'm just going to treat myself to later because when, when I'm sick, I like to munch on something chocolatey. So a few Nestle's Bunch of Crunches. They're, they're pretty good. If you guys remember the Nestle Crunch Bar, it's just like a Nestle Crunch Bar cut up into little bits. So not too bad. I got that for a dollar. Um, next, we have the Tussin DM. This is the... Uh, cough medicine with an expectorant because I'm getting a lot of sinus and congestion right now. Not only does this help your throat and prevent you from coughing, it actually helps get out what's already in there, all the mucus that build, builds up from uh, being sick. And I'm sorry if I'm grossing some people out here, but I am speaking the truth. Uh, this is the generic Dollar Tree brand. Same thing as Robitussin. and I'll be honest with you, I think it works just as good if not better. You can read the uh, manufacturer. There is Bio Farm in Levittown, Pennsylvania. Well, that's interesting. My mother grew up in uh, Levittown, New York. And you can see it's good till the 17th. And last but not least, I have this Dollar Tree brand uh, antiseptic mouth rinse because when you're sick, especially you have a sore throat, the germs that build up in your mouth will actually continue that sore throat on for longer than is necessary. If you use this at least twice a day, that'll kill any kind of germs uh, that you might have built up in your mouth. And as a lot of dentists will tell you, the human mouth is one of the grossest things in the world. It, it, it's true because we don't tend to brush our teeth enough. See, this kills germs that cause bad breath plaque and the gum disease gingivitis. Yeah, I remember those commercials back in the day. This is just as good. It says, I think, compared to the, uh, it used to say but compared to the ingredients in uh, Listerine, but I guess they made them take that off. When you buy mouthwash, you always want to make sure you get antiseptic because that actually has the alcohol in it, and that's what's going to go ahead and kill the uh, germs. And you can see we have methyl salic salicylate. And I, uh, menthol, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that first one because I don't know how it's pronounced, but they're all basically general terms for alcohol. Well, that's what I picked up for today. And I want to show you guys one of the things. I'm going to actually turn this into a vlog, so I'll be back in just a minute. You guys may remember this from my previous video a couple of weeks ago from um, my mom and I went down to the other part of Chesapeake for garage sales. I think it was about two weeks ago. And I went to this one garage sale, and they sold me that um, Dell Inspiron 531. Well, she also gave me this monitor. This right here is a Samsung model SyncMaster 2220WM. Uh, this is a 23-inch LCD monitor. I originally thought it was a 22 because of the code in the model number. When I looked it up, it's, they say it's a 22 and a half or a 23-inch monitor. She gave this to me for free because it, even though you would actually get power, like if you push the power button, the LED would come on, nothing would come up on the screen, not even if you hooked up a computer to it. So she said, yeah, if you're into fixing monitors, I can take it for free. And I said, sure. So I finally got around to taking it apart yesterday. And it's a fairly easy monitor to take apart. As a matter of fact, there are no screws. It's just clips on the end. So you just take a screwdriver and you pry the ends all around and it'll actually come off fairly easily and once you do that you just unscrew the boards in this case I figured the problem would be on the power board and I was definitely right so I'll go ahead and turn it over and as you can see the two caps here are definitely mushrooming as a matter of fact I don't know if the camera will pick it up but this one here is ha actually has some electrolyte leaking out of it if I do it from that angle, you can see it better. There you go. You can see a normal cap here. These are still good, where the cap is not swollen. And then these here, where you can see the top has mushrooms. So 
I'm assuming that's the culprit. Um, I ordered these two on eBay yesterday. I got Nichicon uh, caps, which I know are a fairly good brand. These are 10 volt, 1000 microfarad caps, so those should be in, in a few days. And I'm going to re just replace these two for now, and if that fixes the problem, great. If not, I'll have to do some research and probably have to replace these two and maybe even these two right here. Um, just looking at the placement of these, because they're near this big heat sink, I would think this controls the power for the uh, transformer and the startup circuit. So, more likely than not, these, this is the reason why the monitor is not powering up, at least, at least completely. Um, but I figured the caps themselves only cost $3.25. And, you know, since I didn't pay anything for the monitor, I figured it was well worth giving it a try. Now, I'm going to try to film soldering this, but like I've said in the past, and UXW Bill said this too, neither of us are very good at soldering, so do not laugh when we try to do the video for this. Um, and I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the monitor. Once I get it working, I may actually keep this this might be replacing this uh, e-machine monitor which is having a lot of issues with its power button here it seems to be working okay today but some days I can't even get this thing to power on that's why I usually leave it in standby mode well I'm gonna end the video because my throat is actually getting pretty raw right now hope you guys enjoyed this quick video update video please remember to like and subscribe and as always have a blessed day everybody